You mean we have something like this here in the Gambia? That's one of the most frequently heard comments one hears about Malikman Detailering. This is a world-class tailoring company founded by a Gambian, run by Gambians and operating in the Gambia. So let us tell the story of how we've come to have an international standard tailoring business in the Gambia. When we look at the journey from where it started to where the business is today, we hear an inspiring and inspirational story. A story that shows one can start from humble beginnings and yet rise to great heights and that getting to such a position requires talent, creativity, passion, foresight, determination, family support, a quest for innovation and never resting on one's laurels. The man who gives his name to the business, Malik Mendy, family members and colleagues, take us through the journey. Here's Malik Mendy telling us about his upbringing and how he got into tailoring. My father was a tailor and my mom was a housewife. And I uh, grew up at an uh, Serakuna primary school from uh, primary one to six. When I was six years old, but uh, that's the time I uh, entered school. By, but by the time of uh, primary six, which when I was 12 years, that's the time I started sewing. And uh, those days, I started sewing for my classmates and so forth. And also, I do help my father for sewing uniform. Many of those former classmates have remained close to Malik, and they tell us what it was like back then. Uh, this is somebody we went to primary school with, and uh, one can say we've spent most of our childhood days with him. And apart from the educational system that we all went through, he was one man who was very focused with uh, the, fa the, pro the profession uh, of tailoring which his father was doing at the time. Nyo Bokon Serakunda Primary School, uh, primary one to six of 1966. He was very neat. Foko gis, he's, he's, he's so clean. Wow, do that involve nak in sports, ak yuyu. Mom su wacha and reya kamtina be wacha, dao chi tailoring works obi pur dimbole his father. Malinus was a schoolmate, but they senior me about two classes. So whenever we go, we meet Malik in the tailoring workshop. Most of our uniform, me and Ed, was sewn by him. Malik was somebody at school. He was more quieter than the other siblings. And he was very much engaged with what other people do, either to assist or to join them. Malik started sewing my uniform when he was at the age of 12. He knew what he was doing. Not every child grows up to follow in the footsteps of their parent, but that was the path Malik was to choose at a young age. He has siblings, but uh, they went to do other things. But for him, he followed the family roof and, of course, became a well-known national and an international tailor. Okay, I went to Form 2, then uh, I start dropping because I don't have time to study. From school, helping my father up to 1 a.m., 2 a.m. When we went to Form 3, oh, I take the decision, yeah, I'm going to be a tailor. I don't need to waste my time going to Form 3, Form 4. First time, second time, first week, second week, I quit. Yeah, my father was a tailor, but, but Moses was the guy who really put it in me that be a tailor. A turning point was when his father bought him a machine. When I left school, it was 78. Then my father got me a machine. It was called Typical. I can fully remember that uh, machine name. And uh, I love it. After a while, still serving for people, Malik got a job working at RBTH in 1979 as a tailor serving staff uniforms and patients' gowns and more. When I, when I left school, after I get employment at RVTH, from 79 to 86, I quit. Yeah, because I got a lot of customers, expatriates and so forth. 
whereby I cannot uh, carry on with my job with these customers. That's why I quit. In 1986, Malik took one of the biggest business decisions of his life. Is I have a friend, uh, my best friend, he was working at the bank, Standard Chartered. When I left hospital, he said, look, Malik, we'll try and you get you a loan at the bank. By then, it was difficult to get $1,000 a loan. Yeah, in fact, uh, he fight, 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 fight with his boss. No, he's my friend, give him the loan. Blah. No, and the boss said, no, he will not able to pay the $1,000. And he went to the extent and said, oh, if he didn't pay, you deduct it from my salary. And the bank manager told him, no, never say that. That's against banking rules. <laughs> yeah. Then he apologized and so But at the end of the day, they give it to me. And I do pay. I want to leave. By then, my boss say no. You are not going to leave. You are not going to leave. Those days and today, it is completely different. Because what happened is he told me, no, you are not going to leave. You say you are going to, going to set up a business and so forth, so forth, so forth, so forth. If you leave, you are going to lose all your benefits. That time, the government was retrenching people. He said, okay, look, let me try and see whether I can retrench you so that you can get your benefits. So he did. We are by, I got that money. I didn't put it in the business. You know this family affairs because those days my family, they were fetching water. Believe me, about uh, 500 meters. That time I was married, 500 meters to get one uh, bucket of water. Then I used that amount to bring a tap in the compound. But when Gamtil came, oh, I have a telephone set. Now I was relaxed. Because now I started directing people coming to my house in Dipakuna. Turn left, after three Johnson, turn right. And they were able to make it. Even by then, those days, British High Commissioners, American Ambassador, they used to uh, come to my house for their sewing. Business was growing so fast, Malik had no option but to expand. Yo, that's the time I, uh, I start expanding in my uh, our family compound i get another machine and get another tailor and then there was a stroke of luck a customer made an introduction on his behalf that was to take his business up a notch or two and then one day i just received some uh, white customer with one driver he was the driver of the md of standard chartered and then my friend told me look Today you caught a big fish. I say what? He say, these kids, they are the kids of our general manager. Is it? He said, yes. Uh, okay, I know. Then I say, okay. Now I will give them an appointment whereby the driver will not able to come. The dad will come. Then I give them an ap odd appointment. 7.30 appointment, <laughs> whereby the driver will close at work, then the dad will come. Okay, then what happened is when the dad come, I show him, okay, look, I'm banking with you, but you see, we are, I'm working in my living room here. Okay, that time I was building a house, but I need to expand a workshop. I told him all my project, and he said, look, do a project proposal, and find a guarantor, then uh, we'll give you the loan, 20,000. Yeah, then I do that. And luckily, my cousin, late Babu Job, he guaranteed me, and they give me the 20,000. Whereby I get this, uh, I build up this, this workshop and uh, get other two machines, start working. Most of my customers were uh, these expatriates and so forth. And uh, I was once taken to Combo Beach Nov Hotel, whereby I was allowed to do business with the tourists. And they are also giving me business the same time, giving me business the same time. 
paying me and advertising me with the tourists. The hotel, the entertainment's manager befriended and helped him in a big way. Even the Minister of Tourism now, Ahmad Ba, by then he was the, uh, he was the Minister of, uh, no, he was the entertainment manager who do advertise me on stage. Yeah, he helps me a lot. And you know, he's a hardworking guy. And if he's, you know, when you are hardworking, when you are hardworking, anybody hardworking so he will help you, will give you helping hands. That's why there is a proverb in Wolof, they say, derema, derema muna ada. And not only that, if I went to the uh, hotel without a car, he will make sure that he will drive me to my house. Yeah, to my house before going home. Yeah, he do that for me. It was while serving for tourists at the hotels and some banks that a challenge presented itself. Yeah, in fact, uh, w w what happened by then also, uh, I was making uniforms for banks, Standard Chartered, Trust Banks, many institutions, NAWEC, and also uh, what brings me to this level is Standard Chartered, because I always take challenges. And uh, Standard Chartered, once they stop, they say, okay, this time we are going to order their uniform from South Africa. And I say, okay, look, I will sit down and wait to see whether this uniform will get anything which I cannot do. But unfortunately, the uniforms came and they, are, they put this standard chartered logo. I say, wow, I cannot do it. And I will make sure that I will do it. As had happened, and would happen many times in his personal and professional life, things took another unexpected positive turn. Then I have a trip to Germany. I got the visa, but I don't have fear. And the fear was just $6,000. Then when you, but when you have a strong wife, my wife told me, look, take a credit. People are paying money for visa. And you have visa, you say you are not taking credit for, <laughs> for yeah, take, a, take a credit and go, which I did. As you may suspect by now, Malik was not simply going to Germany for the tourist experience. Luckily, I found this machine making umbrella, a domestic one, uh, which can do this uh, logo. Having brought the machine back to Gambia, it was in plain sailing straight away. My friend Yogu Toure, uh, uh, train me how to use computer and so forth and it was very difficult I was uh, after going walking up to 8 o'clock going to hotel up to 11 12 o'clock sitting at the house up to 2 3 a.m. at the computer to learn computer sometimes I wouldn't say oh yesterday there was s in the uh, keyboard but today there is no s yeah, so I find to struggle to see the S. How I managed to, to make it, my wife didn't understand. He will just, hey, come. Even those who knows computer don't spend this time on computers. You don't know computer, why wasting your time on this? Finally, one day, all those hours of trying to figure out the machine bore fruit. Luckily, I made it. I was able to come out with the standard chartered logo, and I went to them and present it to them. Tell me why I can't make your uniform. Who made it? Me. They, they just came back to me. <laughs> However, sometimes success can also bring problems. Then when they came back to me, then I struggle now, take another loan to get a big machine which can make the logo. And. Uh, that must have cost me 8,000 pounds those days. And uh, it was my first time to go to, uh, to England. And um, I never have difficulties with visa. Because when I go with uh, the bank check of 8,000 pounds, the English people, they didn't play with their money. <laughs> they just stamp it for me. 
Then I went. And I, I bought a ticket for two weeks. But when, what I went for is the machine. And I was able to get it in less than a week. I changed my ticket. I came back. That machine, I put it at uh, Taft Bell. Taft, he also helped me a lot. Yeah, I, I was given a place at Taft Bell. We are, I was doing that business, coming up and down, coming up and down. When I get a second machine, the third machine. But after going up and down was too much. And uh, there, were, there was a lot of laughs. Telephone bills will go up to 2,000 those days because the st staff were abusing the telephones and so forth. And also, I will sleep up to 2 a.m. They call me, oh, what machine have broken down? Then I have to rush and so forth. This time, the sound advice came from his wife. We <laughs> The savings made, especially on rent, meant there were other greater benefits. I save a lot of money. I say I wish I did it before. Because no telephone bill anymore, no rental. In fact, what happened is that year, it was 2006, I was about to pay rent. I took top up the money and go and perform my hike. The arrival of the Agoa Initiative brought training and another stroke of good fortune. There I was struggling, struggling, and also you know, those days, it was uh, in the uh, 2006, 7, 8, 9, that time you have this Ago, uh, Ago American program, AGOA, yeah, then um, there were a lot of trainees from Ghana, so forth, and I visited Ghana, and I went with my samples, and my samples were hijacked. And then when we came back, me and uh, Saho Job Sawalo, then my samples were hijacked. Then uh, after we get one uh, Senegalese uh, um, trainer, whom I know more than 10 years before. Uh, he's a mentor, a friend. Then uh, he came for training, and uh, I said, wow. And in fact, uh, what I told the people at the ground by then, they, uh, because according to the program, we have to visit him. After the training, we have to visit him in Dakar and uh, see what he is doing and how he is doing it, which I already know. As I say, I knew him 10 years before. He's a friend. And uh, then after we went to visit, by then, the American consular was there and other people. It was through the American embassy. And we are trying to see who can export to America. And then uh, this Mr. Arch, he told the American consular, when we were in the factory checking what he, he is doing and so forth, he was at the office with the consular. He told the consular, the group you are with, if Malik did not export, none of them with export. And the counselor say, is it? How come I didn't know Malik? Because I'm always a backbencher. How come I didn't know Malik? Then he just attacked. It was Tasana, one lady, she was called Tasana. Then she just crossed and met me at the works, at the factory. Oh, Malik, it seems that if you don't export, no one will export. I say, is it? Yes, Mr. I told me that. How come I didn't know you? If we go, I will come and visit you. For all the good work he was doing, it took a foreigner to push open another door for him. By then, uh, I have uh, my workshop at Dipakuna, the embroidery at my house, and another expansion. I rent the other side. So I was running here, there, there, three places at the same time. 
So when we visited all these places, when she came, we visited all these places. That time we are supposed to go to a trip to uh, Atlanta, Georgia, to one trade fair. To one trade fair. And uh, she told me, uh, she asked me a question. Did the Ministry of Trade knew about you? I say no. She said, okay, I'll ask them to visit you. These people are powerful. <laughs> then she asked the Ministry of Trade to visit me. By then, the Deputy Permanent Secretary came. And when she came, she visited all my three places. And I told her, look, I need nothing from you. I just need a piece of land from you people. That's all I need from you. Then that will house all my uh, three places, one house whereby I can be steady and do my job. And that piece of land has been put to good use. On it now stands the main premises of Malik Mendy Tailoring. However, it is more than just a building. It is a monument to ingenuity, talent, creativity, perseverance and innovation. When you see the uniforms of the Gambia's armed forces and police, this is where they are made. This is not a place where the parts are assembled. What starts with pieces of material go through various processes that we can see here, resulting in the finished article. Here we see the room where badges and logos are produced. In addition, many businesses and institutions have their uniforms made here. Much of what goes on within the walls of this building is impressive, but to keep a happy workforce requires much more. The business has excellent training facilities and an innovative approach to ensuring staff loyalty. I, I, I train them tailoring free of charge. And you know what br brings this, this training? If you, go, if you go back, I started a long way. If you go back, let's say, uh, 20 years back, yeah, I was, uh, it takes me a whole month to find for one tailor because all the skilled peoples are non-Gambians. If you want an additional tailor, it will take you about a month to find one. And if in the one you are going to get, it is not going to be the, the, uh, a good one, you will start training that somebody again, the way you want it and how you're doing it. Then I say, okay, no, come on. Now I'll start training my own people at, on my own course. I train them free of charge. After some time, even I give them stipend. And uh, after, if I know you can do it and there is space, we employ you. Lima ampul wale moi halay then you are a gur gur lubu ba reu milu ne kangfi for so we meche bu ne kangfi. Balanga jail sa time, toko kir, nilangi watch a school, nilangi neka school drop out, amun lun def, meche yudun je. Bun fogne, so tope meche, delu ganao. Nyun mep, nyun minga jisni, si meche len tede, si meche len ame luneka, si len ame sun jabot, ame sun jabar, di def sun daily business. Te nyom hamal len kosen bofa. Time we no jail, nigga hamne. Time we no jail, pull them to Europe. Them nakale bagwe lenko oye hawa. Them bagwe toro si yonbi ni desi ni ne ni the fortunate one ni omnyo iduga telo lu very few. So ko de phone fee janga meche munga aneka silanen lu uti silinga neko. Te munga achi fee lo hamne. Munga dem felisa doko am. So my last words moi pull nya halay nuje ma gur gurlu diktisur damalen ko wa bun fogne meche agbu mundi don nehut yo hamgalila gene sakir pull ganyo fi fehel be 
ñoo biñ fe ñoo nga gene fi lo xamne elek mun nga ibisa business bi bopa mek ci dara a mek bil ci sa family japale ci rew mi rew mi ay ndiab xale yi lañ nit fi nek ni ay xale dong lañ nit pour ñi rew bu rew bi kanam ñun suñ tay ma nge dem xale yi ñoy ñew so nañ mek soné metier bi ñoo janga topa nañ ko gene ci dara elek ñu jeriñ seen bopa jeriñ rew mi being the owner's son is not always easy however malik mendi must be happy to have his son on board for many reasons including these uh, i was with him doing the tailoring then after a 2000 it was 2009 it was the month of august i think i went to germany uh, by then my brother was in luxembourg so my father prepared me for me to go to germany to be there but it didn't work out then he told me to come back to work with him then i uh, agree with him because i was having a six weeks visa i think we only stayed there for three weeks and i came back with him then after 2010 he took me to senegal uh, one of his friend named uh, gora ach he has a very big tailoring factory there i even name him i i i and i even name my first son after him that gora ach yeah i was uh, there with him for three years doing tailoring, developing my skills in tailoring. Uh, that's where I studied how to sew suits and cut it, cutting it. And like how to manage a big factory. Yeah. It's, sometimes it's not easy to work with your parents. Yeah, because you know, here in Africa, the culture, uh, you have to respect your parents. Anything that they say, you have to do it. But for me, uh, it, it helps me a lot because I, uh, I learned to know more about my dad. All, all, I think all my dad's children, I'm the one who know him better. Because like, at first, when my dad calls me, Usain, Usain, when he calls me, he speaks very loud. You will think that like, I've done something wrong. When it's just normal to him. But now I'm used to it. My elder brother, he just came back during this COVID time, 2020, he was in Luxembourg. Like he was just complaining that this, this and this. I tell him, no, uh, I'm, I'm used to him. I know him very well because I've been with him uh, almost all my life and I'm working with him. So I, I know him better than all my uh, other brothers and sister siblings. Yeah, my mother too is here. So I know them better because I'm working with them. Yeah, my work here is like, I, I have direct contact with the customers, uh, taking orders from them. Then after all, I will go and get the materials. Then I will order somebody to go and take the measurements of, of the people that we are going to sew for. Then give it to the cutter, they will cut it. Then it will come upstairs in the system, then regulate it, then we sew it. We will super, I will be supervising it, coordinating everything from starting to ending. Then like, for instance, uh, the sewing machines we have uh, electronic sewing machines here, unlike the other tailors, these are power saving machines. Uh, like they don't consume a lot of electricity, they consume less, and they are built with scissors. Like for instance, this uh, machine behind me is an uh, electronic eyelet buttonhole machine. This is the buttonhole machine that uh, does the buttonhole for a suit, for a suit. So we have other buttonhole machines that does for shirts and trousers, just, those are just normal button holes. We have button fixing machines too. But uh, I have an edge over my dad because I can, for me, I am handy. Anything that I see once, I will be able to replicate it. So all these machines, I, I do the maintenance. Yeah, I do the maintenance. It's just a gift from God. Yeah, I didn't learn it anyway. I think uh, it was, if it is just going to abroad to make it, I would have never come back to the Gambia with my dad to work with him. Because I was in Germany. Like, if, for instance, for example, right, this time that we are talking, like, uh, I was, by then, I was 15, I think, when I was going to Germany. My age mate, if you take them there, telling them to come back again, to work in the Gambia, 
they will be thinking that you are speaking Chinese to them. They will not even listen to you. But I do listen to my dad, and I was not like, for, for that moment he was telling me, I didn't even see the message, but it's just a, a matter of respect than taking my parent word. So, but about two years later, then I s realized that this is what my dad was telling me. So, to all my, uh, all, all my fellow youths, I'm, I'm pledging to them that, like, we just believe that we can make it in this country. We, we are the ones who have to build this country. If we, cannot, if we do not build this country, no one else will build it for us. There is, there is a say uh, in English that says that, like, if a foreigner come to your land and take your work, that means that you don't deserve that work then. The young people employed are trained for three years, free of charge, and with no agency or NGO providing any grants or loans to do this. Uh, Ibrahim Mendy. Mali am kuma mali sta di liga ya malik about 35 years lady uh as a tailor okay we start uh, di pakunda we are by you don't use machine pedal yini from there you them carry fin from carry fin you know fini uh, all along, you don't train a halal to learn jungle. We are to learn legal law. New legal to company. We are not going to establish and establish and place a bopa. I think this is the interesting way. Uncle Malik Swarakala. Legal Aksaraka. Lu Jafela. Lu Jafela. Why mom nekana nit ko hamne yala moko mechi nyau mubuga ko parese don dara man minga jisni sing papa nyau karla won why malik moto upon nyau nyung topu nyuan nyau nono man mangon teach after mom mama oh ne ma komka yo yangon nyau nyuan ga join ma nyuligay together. Time bo wu nyugi neka dipa kunda, and dafda an meeti torap. He na nyubari sunji se ne film neka affair yagi neka a big company. Then you fog ne no nula kumase. Why really meeti wana? Because then dan tal ay sonel di use machine pedal yini di nyau be borset. Amga lewu soko wa haleli legi di na len jahal. The legal machine thing for just like current current law use electric machine la. Lolo da fa neka chimom. Be pare man mi wa ye ni da fa neka chimman. Ni kala ima jangal ham nai si dara. Law def law ham ne correct tu. Ding kote epi bem set. Ma make sure ne ni mo buge mu mel quality bi mo buga. Suma amud lolo. Danga kundi ne di tepi be amli mo busola. Hamna ne lum tuti tuti dal. Dine nje gine bori twenty to twenty something. It could be more than that. Why munu mo kwa japa ni dafa bari. Over the years, former staff have gone on to establish their own successful businesses and remain on good terms with their former boss. Also. The business has picked up various awards for fashion, tax compliance, and others. After we work from nine to five, after closing, they are hearing me. I open the workshop for them downstairs. I open it for them. They do their private jobs and take it home. Yeah, and take it home because that's the only way you can empower them. A life and career that started in school, growing to one machine and one member of staff, has continued to grow. The business now employs 50 dedicated staff, 75% of whom are female. Part of the staff dedication is down to how they are treated here. Malik Mendy says he has found women to be more reliable, dedicated and faster at sewing than men. Malik Mendy believes in the youth of the Gambia and wants to inspire them to have big dreams and big ambitions. 
as the business continues to grow, its success and the message to Gambians is best summed up with a mantra which has governed his life and his business, namely, belief in ourselves, we can do it. For Malik Many Tailoring, the sky's the limit.